My guest today is one of the leading political satire cartoonists in the country. He has won numerous awards for his work and has been shown at galleries around the world. Let's just say that he is to the world of contemporary political satire what LeBron James is to basketball. He is one of the studios of Key West Artists in Residency. So let's go on the deck with Kevin Callagher. Would you say that it is unusual for a Harvard graduate to choose political satire as their career? Yeah, I think it <laughs> probably is. There's not too many of us ending up doing this, but there's also very few, you know, just political cartoonists in the country. Back in the 1980s, they thought that maybe there's about 200, 225 of us. Today, the numbers are like 75 because of the you know, contraction of newspapers and the, the you know, digital revolution and so on. And so it's not necessarily a growth area. So I suspect many future Harvard grads may not want to go this direction either. <laughs> but obviously you enjoy the direction that you've taken. It satisfies me in several ways. First, um, you're dealing with, with humor, which is a kind of curious and magical thing. Um, Second of all, you're dealing with politics, which is a constantly changing and moving target, which means that you have a lot to discuss. But I think more importantly, you feel like you're contributing to the national dialogue on very important issues. And although I'm using humor and using funny pictures as a way of doing it, I really feel like that you're trying to make the country a better place and you're participating, in, particularly in these election years, in the big stories of the day. What do you think about this political season, Kevin? How much fun have you had with it? It's been pretty crazy. It's been a target-rich environment, I can tell you. So it, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. So, so first, you think, you know, tons of material, plus the audience is geared up and paying attention. So everyone's looking at the cartoons, and also when you do your cartoons, you can assume a lot of knowledge from your audience. So you can do more sophisticated work and not explain a lot. Everyone's kind of in the game. The selection is the longest election ever because you know it started you know almost two years before the uh, actual election day, and um, and all that time it's been kind of interesting. Um, but then there's the downside, and the downside is that. Um, this is a really worrying time, and uh, the options that were being put forward are um, raise a lot of eyebrows and a lot of concerns, both both here in the U.S. and around the world. Um, and I worry for our country, and I suspect that um, I would like to hope that you know good de good decisions will be made in the end of the day, but they don't always. So. Um, it gives me more gusto when I participate in my cartoons and trying to get involved. Um, I'll be at both the conventions, the Republican and Democratic convention, doing cartoons from there, watching the thing close up. Um, it's like watching history unfold in front of your eyes. That's kind of interesting and provocative professionally. But as a voter and as an American citizen, I'm really concerned. You know, the dialogue in the country is really the worst it's ever been in my lifetime. Absolutely. What an amazing opportunity, though, you have to be able to follow this election so closely and to be able to be there right on the front line. My job is to keep abreast of the, everything that's going on both locally in Maryland, where I'm, I operate for the Baltimore Sun, the United States, but also globally for The Economist. And it's an enormous privilege to be able to do that. Um, but in this time, in this moment, to uh, witness his history uh, mm -hmm. is really quite fascinating. 